It will. On Sunday, Liverpool became the first team in English football history to win 10 League Cup titles as they toppled Chelsea 1-0, with Virgil van Dijk netting the extra-time winner in the 118th minute. Their head coach, Jürgen Klopp, who will be departing the club at the end of the season after nine years in charge, called it his most special trophy. See you today is so exceptional. We we might never see again, and not because I'm on the sideline, because these things, these things happen, don't happen in football. I, I got told outside that there's an English phrase, you don't win trophies with kids. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, right in you. Um, it's, it is in my a longer career than mine, but in my more than 20 years, easily the most special trophy I ever won. On the other hand, Chelsea boss Mauricio Pochettino, who is still searching for his first piece of silverware in English football, expressed disappointment at the result. We played well, uh, we created chances, big chances, but we didn't score. And you need to be very clinical in, in both areas. And, and I think conceding in the last minute is a, is a really tough, really painful, but we need to keep believing and moving forward. All right, with us in studio to break down the final is our in-house football analyst, Leger Williams. Good afternoon, Leger. Good afternoon. Pleasure, pleasure to be here as always. Yeah, and to talk about a Liverpool win, Liverpool getting the job done despite missing a lot of their key senior players. I felt as if Chelsea gave this one away. I mean, that's tough to say. That's tough to say. It would be kind of harsh to say that they gave it away per se, but I do think that Liverpool, against all the odds, they got it done. They did really well. Um, a lot of young players on show, but, you know, coincidentally, the Chelsea team on paper was still younger than the Liverpool one. Correct. A lot, a lot of people didn't know that. But though. the Chelsea team had a lot more experience than the Liverpool one. I mean, yeah, that's true. But at the end of the day, it was the Liverpool extra experience that gave them the edge. Um, I was actually speaking to my friends be right before the game and we were having a discussion about, you know, the best centre-backs of all time. And I've always had my say on that for the past couple of years, of, past couple of years now. And coincidentally, Virgil van Dijk yet again proved to be so instrumental in Liverpool winning a trophy. It's been a my opinion for quite some time now that I think that he's the best centre-back I've ever seen with my eyes. So... Um, yeah, yet again, a man of the match display, winning goal, something that he's done before. Um, 2022 EFL trophy, he was a man of the match as well. 2019 champion, Champions League win, he was a man of the match also. So he's just been instrumental and he's one of the most transformative signings that we've seen in football probably this century. So um, kudos to him, kudos to Jurgen Klopp as well, who yet again got it done with children really in yeah. the end after subbing on three three teenagers, that's the most teenagers that have appeared in a final for a team since 2007 with Arsenal, of course, you know, we like to give the kids a chance. I couldn't miss the opportunity to say anything. But yeah, extremely impressive by Liverpool and I think, yeah, it's all kudos to them, their team, coaching staff, especially Jurgen Klopp. By the way, I just won $50,000. I had a bet that Lejay would use that stat on the show today. And he did. Oh, yeah. wow. Thanks, Ligia. I you, appreciate you, it. You know I would never let you down, Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> let's get back to the football. Ricardo is just a little bit richer, thanks to you. But, you know, what I found also very big of these young players, and, you know, they're describing them as, you know, um, young boys and all these different descriptions, is that even after the midfielder, Ryan Gravenbridge, was sent off because another injury for Liverpool on their list, they still kept their composure when they came on because for another team with so many youngsters at, with so much on the line, right? They could have flaked. 
but the Liverpool players, they really kept it together. And I think, you know, you touched on Jurgen Klopp, but sometimes we forget how special he has really been and how much he has really impacted this Liverpool club because you can see what's happening from, you know, the youngsters going right up. Yeah, um, you make two very important points. Um, firstly, actually, when it comes down to Gervin Bridge, I actually think it was a, it's not a good thing that he got injured, of course, but I do think that it, it helped them in the end because Harvey Elliott then came into the midfield, they started to use Conor Bradley a bit wider when he was tucking in a bit. So I think tactically that ended up giving them an edge in the game. Yeah. But in terms of what you said, in terms of the, I think it comes down to the confidence that Jurgen Klopp, Jurgen Klopp gives to these players. A lot of the times players use the, 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 the transmit the energy that the, their manager gives to them when they go onto the field, the trust that the manager has in them. So when it comes down to Jurgen Klopp, so Jurgen Klopp, so often you see players that you would think are less than so often players that you think don't have the experience to go on and do special things often do that. You can see that with Kelly here in the goal right now, always coming up in really big moments for Liverpool whenever Alisson is injured or whenever he decides, whenever it's his time to go into the goal. So I think it's just the confidence that Jurgen Klopp transmits to them and that means that he's a special, special manager. It's really only a few managers probably in quite some time that really transmit that sort of confidence in their players, whether young or old, and he always gets the best out of his players no matter what crap he has. So he has to be lauded for that and quite consistently he's proven to be one of the best managers of all time. Yeah, Lish, the Carabao Cup is not a very highly regarded cup, but in the post-match interview we heard uh, Jurgen Klopp saying um, of all the titles that he has won, and he's won the Champions League as well, that this is the most special title he has ever won. What do you make of that comment? I think it's just the manner in which he did it. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that this Chelsea team are a juggernaut, that he maybe had N to... Neither is Pochettino. He's, <laughs> he's, he's civil wear less yeah. in England. Yeah, still, but he, he managed Tottenham, so that, that comes with the territory, I suppose. Wow. But, <laughs> but um, when it comes down to it... Um, it's not that Chelsea were this great team that he had to overcome, but just the squad, the, the, the injuries that he had, it's not only the number of injuries. We're talking about a Mohamed Salah being out, a Trent Alexander-Arnold being out, um, Sabazlai being out, Darwin Nunes being out, Jota being out. These aren't just squad players or players that can rotate in and out of teams. These are some of his most important players, if not his most important players. So it, just for... And, and a lot of, I saw something that said a lot of other coaches, maybe for a pep, maybe for Arteta or other managers who are in this type of scenario, who would have seen the starting 11 or maybe only 13 players being used throughout the extra time because they would be a bit fearful to chuck the youngsters on there. But that goes again to the point I was saying about the, the faith he has in them and how he transmit that well because none of the players looked out of place whatsoever when they came on and that's very important. He profiled them well, played them in the positions where he knew they would excel and excel they did. And, of course, it would have been special, too, because in a few months he, he'll be leaving this job. Yeah, and um, maybe he's not entirely sure which of the other trophies that he win, he'll win. He's still People in. are saying the quadruple. I think that's a stretch. That, that, <laughs> I, I'm going to put my neck out on the line and say that's not going to happen for Liverpool. Yeah. It's not going to dent how good of a team they are or how good of title credentials they do have. But I do think when it comes down to it, could they win the Europa League? I already said on here, yes. Sir Lance, that they, they probably should win the Europa yes, League. You said that, yeah. Can they win the FA Cup? The last time they won the EFL Cup, they did indeed go on and win the FA Cup as well, so that's possible. But are they going to win the Premier League when they have mm. the, the best team in the world, Manchester City, right there? Thank and you, a, thank and you. And a team that's performing close to that but, level but, in but Arsenal. Before, I, before Ricardo jumps no, in here, man, or, or CEO Nick today. Matthews yeah. said to Mariah just now, that the best team in Europe is in Spain. And Maria agreed with him. And I was shocked because I expected her to, to, to challenge that He comment. was speaking about La Liga. We were sticking to La Liga discussion. He said they were the best team in the best team in Europe or the world. Didn't he say the world? Is in, is in La Liga. Yes. Is in Spain. And I expected you to challenge him and you didn't. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, well because I was just there's focused hardly on a La Liga. bigger Man City fan than you are. No, that's a fact. But you see, because I was skewed into the La Liga segment, and La Liga is our product, yeah. I didn't want to 
Go again. Rock the boat. No, you didn't no, want to my, rock the boat. My, my, I understand. It's same. Anything that Chapo says, I, I, I usually go along with it. So not that true. you're not fired. Yeah, exactly. Not true. So, so I understand. But I will why. tell you, don't be bullied. No, Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo is only like this on air, you know. It's off air when me and Ricardo, you know, you know, chilling. He's not like this, so I know, but uh, let's it's just not, for the cameras. But let's not take away from what you just said, because yes, Manchester City is one of the teams that will really challenge for this title, <laughs> and your team, Arsenal, <laughs> just behind. So it will be difficult for Liverpool to get the quadruple. Yeah, um, I, I do think that both Man City and Arsenal are better teams than than Liverpool. Um, yeah. Both teams have better attacks. Oh, oh, they are? I can uh, understand. Arsenal has the best defence in I'm Europe. I'm sorry so. that you all can't come into the discussion <laughs> because your team is a little bit to the bottom of the table. But R Ricard, Ricard, I would argue that Sir Lads doesn't have a team anymore. But that, that. I, I have one thing to say. What's just, that, Ricardo? Just one thing. Let's go to a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>